Let's talk about the WAN emulator, which is a device that we put between two routers, or really any two networking devices, and inject latency loss or jitter in between them. In this particular CPOC, we've actually connected the WAN bridge like this. Uh, over in EX1, you can see this is our site that has MPLS and internet connectivity with a TLOC extension between them. We've actually connected INSEC6 to the WANM, and then the other side goes back and connects to India 10. You can see that India 10 is connected to a physical NIC on the UCS, has its own vSwitch, and the other side has its own vSwitch and its own VM NIC, and it's connected to INSEC 6. Now, running on the UCS server is the WAN M VM, which actually bridges those two connections together and allows them to reach each other. But as it bridges through the WAN M, we have the ability to inject latency loss and jitter. Now let's look at the VMware configuration for this device. On here you can see the WANM. You can see we have three network adapters configured. One is the out-of-band management. One is connected to India 10 and one is connected to the VEdge side. And we're going to bridge these two adapters together in order to provide connectivity from Insect 6 to India 10. We can log into the WANM itself and look at that. Here on the WANM, you can see that Ethernet 0 is configured for out of band management. Ethernet 1 and 2 are the two interfaces we're bridging together and we've actually got a virtual bridge interface, BR0, up at the top. Now if you look at BR0, that's going to be a virtual interface, which is just binding Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2 together, and we can check this. By showing the bridge controller, you can see that BR0 has a bridge ID, it's not running spanning tree, and it's binding Ethernet 1 and 2 together. So that is actually where we're going to be injecting the latency loss and jitter for, uh, to affect our application-aware routing later. But this is basically how the WANM works. Physically, we have multiple connections to the UCS. We bridge them together through the WANM, and then we use the WANM controls to inject that latency loss and jitter. Let's jump over to the WANM web controls and take a look at it. Here's the WANM web controls where we control the latency loss jitter. If we go into basic mode, we can see that bridge zero is selected. We're not running any WANM controls right now, but we have the ability to either choose bandwidth on the interface or rather to emulate bandwidth on the interface or to simply inject latency. In advanced mode, we can do more things, but for the purposes of this CPOC, we're just going to inject some delay. I have a constant ping running right now between Insect 6 and India 10, which we can look at here. And you can see that on average, we get about two, two to three, two and a half milliseconds of latency. If I inject latency by adding latency on either on both sides it is additive and so what will happen is that it will add the latency together and give us a total of 200 milliseconds of latency so I'll click apply settings and that should cause the WANM to inject 200 milliseconds of latency you can see here that WANM is running so let's check our ping you can see here we do in fact see 200 milliseconds of latency being injected and we can use this along with the SD-WAN application aware routing policy to show how impact to a particular circuit can be routed around by the SD-WAN fabric. So how can we combine the different tools that we're using in CPOC to demonstrate the SD-WAN topology better and the SD-WAN solution? 
Well, if you recall, we've set up our T-Rex so that we can send particular traffic profiles over certain paths through the network. And now we have the ability to inject latency into those paths. And so we can combine these tools in order to show our application aware routing at work. Let's do that now. I've started a traffic profile from the T-Rex. It's going to go for about 10 minutes. Let's take a look at the vManage so that we can look at our application aware routing policy. Here's the application aware routing policy. We have different classes of service. We're matching on different DSCB values. And at the bottom, you can see we're also using an application family list match using the deep packet inspection engine for Oracle traffic. Now I am sending Oracle traffic and you'll notice on the right our SLA class is preferring biz internet as the color to use. That means that as long as we're meeting a certain SLA for silver class we're going to use the internet color to send all Oracle traffic. We should be able to see that happening but first, let's take a look at those SLA classes. And also, we should probably go back to the WANM and turn off the latency so that we get a steady state. We'll turn off the WANM first. So I'll just hit stop WANM, and that should turn off the WAN impairment. We can verify that with our pings. And yes, we are back to a steady state. Now back to the vManage. Let's take a look at the SLA class so that we know how to violate it. So we'll go back to config and policies. And then we'll look at our lists under centralized policy to get our SLA class. Now we're trying to meet class silver, which to be conforming needs less than 10% loss, less than 300 milliseconds of latency, and well, jitter's not taken into account at all. So as long as we exceed 300 milliseconds of latency, we will fail the silver class SLA and force the color to flip over to any other available color that is meeting the SLA. In this case, it'll be MPLS. So let's take a look at the device. We'll need to build a, a baseline. We'll go over to Insect 6. Take a look at the tunnels that we've got working change it to real time and we'll also change the chart option to show uh, transmit and receive data. Now we will have to wait here for a little bit to make sure that we're starting to paint uh, the graph but after a little while we'll get some good data and then we'll be able to inject the latency and hopefully see the application or routing take effect. All right, well, I let that run for a little while. It took a, just a few minutes to get to this point. And you can see that we're sending traffic and receiving traffic almost entirely over the internet colors, which is what we want. We expect to send and receive Oracle traffic over the internet colors. So at this point, I think it's safe to say that the best thing to do to test application aware routing would be to inject enough latency to cause an SLA failure and see if that traffic starts to flip over to the other color. So let's do that now. We'll go to the WANM, and again, this time we'll inject 200 milliseconds of latency on both sides, giving us a total of 400, which will exceed the SLA class, which was 300 milliseconds. Go ahead and apply the settings. This should be running. We can check with our ping. You can see that we now have 400 milliseconds of latency, and once the application aware routing gets enough probes across the fabric to show the uh, de decreased performance, we should see things start to flip over to the other color. You can see here that we already see the MPLS starting to pick up and we should shortly see the internet start to drop down. And at this point, you can actually see where they start to cross. The MPLS is now taking the majority of the traffic and connections on the internet are winding down. And there you are. Our application aware routing is working correctly. 
And we were able to show that by using a combination of our WAN impairment tool and our T-Rex traffic generator. I hope that this helps you understand how these tools could be used to demonstrate Cisco's products and solutions and that you can use them in your own labs and in your own demonstrations. Thanks for watching.